Very good morning to all of you. Welcome to today's news analysis. We are doing the Indian Express Papers Chandigarh edition. Now before starting with the analysis, I would like to tell you that we are posting current affairs based MCQ on our Telegram channel, 5 questions. So you can practice them uh, on the Telegram. So the link is in the description box as well as in the comment section. I'll post it over there. Now coming to the news topics. So some of the important ones. So one is uh, Haryana state provided for reservation in private sector. The high court has quashed that law. So again, the issues of pro can the state provide reservation in private sector, which articles of the constitution have been discussed. So all that we will cover uh, briefly. We'll do it. Okay. Prime minister has expressed concerns over the use of deep fakes or misuse of deep fakes. So I have shared with you on Telegram an article from the World Economic Forum where uh, it defines the deep fakes plus why is it required and what are the concerns and then uh, regulatory framework of other countries in dealing with deep fakes. So this is important. Read that article, summarize it. I think that will be good. Next, there is this Voice of Global South Summit taking place. So we are having the second summit. First summit happened uh, sometime last year. So second summit is going on. And here, one of the ministers has pushed, pushed for Global Biofuel Alliance that members of uh, the Global South who are attending, that they become part of the Global Biofuel Alliance. So this thing is there in the news. Plus uh, Mr. Piyush Goel, one of the other ministers. So he has called for a supply chain pact between these countries of the global south. Okay, then a WHO study and the US government study has highlighted that 11 lakh children missed measles vaccine. So of course, uh, we will look at the measles vaccine. What is the justification that the government is giving? And besides, measles is provided for under India's universal immunization program, which is now known as Mission Indra Dhanush. And in those districts where the coverage was not good, there is intensified Mission Indra Dhanush. Right? So there is an intensified mission plus there is Mission Indra Dhanush. So it reflects, you know, this uh, vaccination comes to light because it uh, the scheme comes to light. Okay, we have the editorials. And uh, besides, we hear that uh, Muizu, who was elected as the uh, Maldives president, so he has he has entered into the office. And there is the issue of Rohingya, which is again there in the news. So this is a, again an important topic. Coming to the economy section, uh, we hear about RBI, we hear about Indo-Pacific economic framework. So there are talks on clean economy concluded. So we should look at the IPEF from mains as well as prelims. I think more focus this time on the pre. Now moving on to the explained section. Uh, the explained section starts with COP28 which is scheduled to be in Dubai. So today we get to know an overall outline as to what are the focus areas of COP28 on climate change and where are we when it comes to addressing the fight on climate change. So this is a good summary. Uh, I have shared the screenshot on the telegram as well and uh, I'll discuss it. And then uh, we are discussing in the explained section again, we are discussing what is happening in Myanmar and how is it impacting uh, um, uh, what is happening in uh, Myanmar and how is it affecting the state of Mizoram. And besides India UK free trade agreement. Yes, yesterday we talked about roadmap 2030. So same thing is briefly covered and explained what are the key takeaways uh, if the FTA goes through. Okay, so first news now. So the High Court quashes Haryana law which provided for reservation of 75% in uh, to local residents for private jobs. Now you can imagine Maruti or some IT company which is operating in Haryana, Gurgaon, etc. 
So they are, according to this law, they are required to have 75% representation of locals. Okay. Now, Haryana is not the only law, uh, only state to do it. There are other states also who have brought in such reservations, such conditions for the private sector. So as far as we are concerned, High Court has quashed this law. So briefly, what, what did the law say? So the law said that the, those companies which are now operating in Haryana, they should provide 75% reservation. 75% reservation to those who are earning less than 30,000. So lower scale jobs basically. And so those were to be given to the uh, local residents. So condition has been imposed on the private sector that you, for, if you want to operate from our state, you have to give so much reservation. Now, what is the case for government in that regard? So government is saying that, see, uh, we are inviting companies, we are providing you subsidies to run. The, the reason is that we want jobs for the local population. That is our sole goal because jobs, jobs means better livelihood, better conditions of life, etc. So jobs for locals, government wants to create non-farm jobs. So that is very much to be tough to be done. Okay. So companies should invest should not just hire, but they should also invest in skilling locals. Companies like Maruti, etc. They may say that, see, we need people from outside because skilled labor is not there. So companies must invest in skilling of locals. Right? Government subsidize corporates. So the corporate should reciprocate by investing in social welfare. So that is the idea. And to provide for reservation, of course, uh, there has to be some basis in the constitution also, which I frankly I could not find. But uh, the government that time said that they are using the following articles. So one is article 15, which provides, which makes a case for reservation, right? So it can provide for reservation for those who are uh, socially, economically backwards. And article 16 is... Article 16 is for equality of opportunity in public employment, in matters of public employment. So they use these two, but you see Article 16 is again for public sector and not for a private employment. Okay, now why did High Court quash this? So High Court said this is discriminatory, this is false, this should not take place. So, so one of the bases was that art, the uh, uh, article 15.1 was used and Article 15.1 says that the state shall not discriminate against any individual on the grounds only, only of religion, race, caste, sex, place of birth or any of them. High Court is saying that you have, uh, you are discriminating people, right? But uh, the government over here is saying that it allows uh, discrimination only on the basis place of birth. We are discriminating on the basis of domicile of a individual. Right. So domicile is not place of birth. So that is the what the government has uh, stated. While the court has found it discriminatory, that you are discriminating uh, discriminating people from place where they belong. Second, Article sixteen four was used. Uh, Article 16, uh, Clause 4 says that, uh, Section 4 says that the reservation can be provided for matters of public employment. So that can be done. But this can only be done by the parliament and not by the state legislature. Nothing in this article shall prevent parliament from making any law. So, but this is done by the state legislature. So on that basis also, there is a flaw over here. Right. And one more thing that came to light was Article 19. Article 19 says, people have right to practice any profession, carry any occupation, trade or business. And besides, Article 19D says to move freely throughout the territory of India. So you can imagine somebody from let's say, Bombay or Maharashtra, migrant worker maybe, let's say we can talk about the lower scale also, less than 30,000. Uh, so they come, 
they are uh, in Haryana. Now they have the right to get livelihood over there. First of all, they have the right to move and reside in Haryana. Plus, they have the right to get livelihood, practice their profession. Now, having such a law discriminates on that matter. Fine. So, Article 15, 16 and 19. So, that is the main thing. So, now overall you have the issue, the reservation thing. You can see it. Other states are also doing it. I have a video on this entire thing actually. This, was an, this is an old topic. So this video is there. Then what are the points in favor of having reservation? And then the contentious issues as far as the polity goes, the constitution goes. Okay. Next. India is hosting the voice of Global South Summit. So this summit is taking place. Here, Prime Minister was making, giving his address and he said, first thing, that this has Israel Hamas conflict that is going on. This has posed new challenges for the global south. So new challenges for the global south. That is one thing that he said. He said we condemn this violence. And the third thing he said was he expressed concerns with regards to the use of deep fakes. So three things are there. Okay. Now, as to the Global South thing is concerned, from Maine's point of view, what we can see is what is India's approach towards uh, the Global South issue, right? How is India looking at capitalizing on the issue of Global South? How India is championing itself as the leader of the Global South? Coming to the deep fix, as I told you, I have shared this article before you. This, uh, yeah. This one, a look at global deep fake regulation and approaches. So here you get the definition of deep fakes, right? And uh, besides this, the uses, the benefits of deep fake technology, plus the concerns associated with it. It can be harmful. It can lead to reputation loss. It can have social impact. It may be used to uh, make false claims and criminalize the society so negative impacts are also there and lastly we have the global regulatory framework overall there are three things there are three things so first is prevention second is detection right and then is response so there are these three things according and you know whichever regulation is there it will work on these three things prevention, detection and response. So first is preventing people from posting and making uh, content, posting content, especially without consent of the person concerned. For, for example, there are PM Modi's songs that are going on. So his consent should be required on that regard. Okay. Detection. If a deep fake has been made, then who has posted it? If it is, is it a deep fake or not? Then who has posted it? So those, those things should be there. In fact, Indian government is focusing on traceability. That is the first person who has posted that video or the deep fake. Uh, that I, name should be given. That can be identified by the government. That should be there. And besides, there should be some sort of a watermark that so and so content is prepared by AI. So India is uh, directing the big techs to work on this issue. And lastly is of course response. If you identify detection, then what action must be taken, especially if it is done with the intent of malice, a bad intent is there. Okay. Last, last one from the front news. We heard about Cypress, right? Cypress and uh, the companies are, uh, you know, Cypress is a tax heaven and it is being used for money tax evasion, money laundering, round tripping of black money. Now we hear about a company known as GMR. It's an infrastructure company, very famous in India. So it has several offshore entities registered at reg as regulatory companies over there. So again, a way of, you know, uh, corporate using shell entities, shell companies, shell companies are companies which are there on paper only, but not physically or doing any operation or earning revenue shell companies but it is a means of putting parking money from one place to another so that 
it is difficult for tax authorities to identify source of money so this has come to light so and there may be many such cases also okay now we just scroll 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 You know, uh, when I take mentorship sessions, like online coaching and all, so when I take those sessions, I'm typically asked, can there be reservation for private sector? So today you can, you have that content on that. Okay, Uttar Kashi Tunnel, right? The people were there, they got trapped in it. Um, the people from the outside are trying to provide relief and get these people out. Now, as I say always, this is a case studies scenario. So how would you deal with it? What would be the course of action? Something like that may be asked. Okay. So till now, the points that we have are the first thing that the people from outside did was they tried to establish communication. People already had walkie talkies over there. So establishing communication was them. So that was the first step. Knowing what is the situation, ground situation, what aid, what relief is required. Okay. Second thing is providing immediate relief. So providing, uh, for example, there were these pipelines, etc. through which grains, uh, chanas, dal, etc. content was, food content was provided. Likewise, medical, first aid, as well as oxygen, oxygen pipes being drilled into and then provided in the people so that people can survive. Uh, in the meanwhile, the digging work is going on, excavation, so that the debris is removed. Last, of course, is evacuation. Now the evacuation is, of course, they were trying to excavate this. They were not able to do it because more debris was falling. So now they are drilling a pipe, steel pipe through which the people can crawl through. And in that they are having difficulty. First machine was not powerful enough. Then they shipped another machine, more powerful machine from Delhi. Now when they are drilling, the machine's weight is not able to take the weight. So now another, you know, they are trying to fix the machine on the ground. Now you see what why is the sequence we are talking about see you cannot evacuate first and then you can communicate with them right it has to be in this order only you make measures for evacuation and later you provide oxygen no so you have to write in this sequence only 11 lakh children missed first measles shot in 2022 we get this data from and this is unfortunate. We get the data from WHO and USA's Disease Control and Prevention, uh, CDC basically, Center for Disease Control and Prevention. You see why I'm saying it's unfortunate because it should have come from National Health and Family Survey or some government entity. US data is telling us WHO data. From there, we are getting this. So that way is not good. Okay. So 11 children, 11 lakh children have missed first measles shot in 2022. Now the reason at being attributed is uh, uh, that during the pandemic years, because of the emphasis on the COVID, uh, the vaccination had dipped. And this is being now being reflected in 2022 data. Now measles shot is uh, very, very important. There are two doses. So if two timely doses given, then we can help deal with the issue of measles. Now, what is measles? You can see the measles over here, a child infected by it. So measles is caused by the measles virus. It is an infectious disease. In severe cases, it may lead to pneumonia, seizures, encephalitis, etc. It can be prevented by vaccines. So that is there. Now, as far as India is concerned, India aimed to eliminate measles by 2023. Right, so that was the aim. Of course, we are lagging behind it. Okay. Now, if we have to eliminate, we need vaccination. So we have the vaccination schemes known as Indradhanush and intensified Indradhanush. So there are these two things, two schemes. In, in, uh, intensified mission Indradhanush. So what is Indradhanush now? Indra Dhanush, Indra Dhanush means rainbow. Rainbow has seven colors. So it's a group of seven vaccines to be given to the ch child. So they are diphtheria, whooping cough, tetanus, polio, measles. So, uh, you know, vaccines for these are provided in the mission Indra Dhanush. It has uh, hepatitis B, meningitis. So those vaccines are provided. 
Rota virus is also there. Seven, seven are there basically. Then what is intensified mission intradhanush? So see, in mission intradhanush for the was for the whole of India is actually for whole of India, but there are certain districts, more backward areas where uh, the vaccination drive has not been so successful. So in for those areas, intensified mission more priority to those areas where coverage has been less. So intensified mission in Tradhanush is not pan-India, it is only for more vulnerable areas. Okay, Manipur chief minister, because of that violence and all the destruction, he seeks rupees, a grant of rupees 600 crores from the union. Maratha quota agitation is going on, right? And uh, so we hear now, they are saying that, you know, we have this reservation for SC, ST and OBCs. Marathas want to claim, you know, the people who are uh, activists, they want uh, Marathas to be declared as OBC. But now they are saying that this reservation should not come at the expense of uh, OBCs. So let's say present one is 50%. If Marathas were included as OBC, so the share of other OBCs would have gone down. So they say, no, we want reservation for Marathas separately. Separately. So then also, I think uh, if 50% ceiling is there, it will get affected. So 50 plus 10 also, if you do, then it violates the Indra Sani judgment or the Mandal case judgment. Next, we come to the editorial opinion section. Okay. So first one, I'm not doing this article, education and pollution Why a cautionary speech in schools, morning assembly or canceling an open air sports day is not enough. We need to do more, right? What measures are to be done for dealing with climate, uh, sorry, we're dealing with pollution. So if we've done and covered enough today, I'm not doing it. Next, reckless promises. So, you know, the elections are going on and both parties, BJP, Congress, national po uh, political parties, they are announcing, uh, sorry, competitive populism. They are announcing series of measures to woo the voters. And uh, the measures are like a paddy procurement over and above the rate decided by the government or the center. Then... They are saying annual income support of rupees 12,000 to be given to the farmers. So this is again double of what the central government scheme PM Kisan Samman Nidhi Yojana is doing. Congress is saying we will provide you farm loan waivers. We will provide you 100 units of free electricity plus monthly un allowance for unemployed youth. So all of this are part of competitive populism. BJP is saying something, so Congress says something. Congress is all in opposition, so they're making bigger claims that we come to power, we'll do this, that. BJP has to do that because they are in power, you know. So, so that is going on. So competitive populism. Okay. Now, uh, talking about competitive populism. So first of all, we have had this case in the court also and uh, some directives for election commission were given in that regard as to how you would deal with this right so here i have summed it up so overall what the election commission was told to do was that all these manifestos and promises that the parties make they should be asked to declare the sources you're saying MSP will be increased, this will increase, we'll give do farm loan waivers. So they, the political parties, both ruling as well as opposition, they must declare in a transparent way as to what would be the means of meeting those promises, what would be the impact on the fiscal health of the state. So that declaration has to be done. Now, other than that, Enforcement of the Fiscal Responsibility Budget Management Act. So that should be done at central as well as the state level. Plus, the citizenry must be made aware that these things, ultimately, the voter has to pay through taxation. So th there will be an added, added burden, burden. If not today, then tomorrow or on the next generation. Okay. So that was one theme. Second, it talks about the BJP's change in stance 
in both terms so 2014 to 19 and 2019 to the present one so first term um, the bjp was wary of this competitive populism in fact the em emphasis was on commitment to macroeconomic stability in this even the welfare schemes was on creation of bank accounts under jan uh, jandan yojana creation of toilets housing lpg right uh, electricity so those things were there and in by while doing this the emphasis was on fiscal prudence lpgs again rate was not you know even if the rate was reduced beneficiary was identified and the subsidy was given directly into the account of the uh, beneficiary so direct benefit transfer was done janadhar mobile trinity was used for this okay in fact the overall arrangement was on decontrolling prices government uh, controlling the prices of the lpg government was controlling the prices of the fuel fertilizer so decontrolling the prices let the market forces decide what the prices should be whereas the subsidy would be given to the uh, uh, to the beneficiary through through the government directly so market prices were not distorted so this was a more appropriate approach and this was termed as new welfareism by then chief economic advisor arvind subramaniam okay so new welfareism new term we get basically now we are seeing in the next term of the bjp uh, the bjp is forgetting this new welfareism and it is going by the uh, old approach that is uh, controlling the prices you see the fertilizer prices urea prices has not been tweaked since 2012 uh, oil prices have been going up but the prices have been not gone up if you go to the petrol pump so those those things then announcement of these uh, things by the state levels so those things are there okay next high and low this is about the governor okay so first of all what has happened in Tamil Nadu, the governor, Mr. R. N. Ravi, he is getting into, um, you know, is getting into confrontation with the elected representatives of the state, the DMK party over there. So the DMK party, for example, the DMK, uh, I mean, the state legislature of Tamil Nadu, they passed 11 bills. Uh, so they have been now been pending before the governor. He is not giving his assent to the bills. Very important bills also, they are being upheld. For example, bills... Uh, involving the power of the state government to appoint vice chancellor prohibition of online gaming anti corruption measures legislation on need so those things are not being up, uh, signed by the governor he's delaying it basically so this is leading to confrontation now this is coming at a time where the supreme court has already has already hearing a case regarding the uh, regarding the non-BJP sta states uh, who are having issues with the governor. So Punjab also we discussed, you know, the governor of Punjab then signed a series of bills. But in Tamil Nadu we see this thing, this is the blatant uh, violation that is taking place. Now overall, if we look at the issue over here, this issue is about the role of governor. And governor, we expect this person to be an independent person. Uh, of holding a high constitutional office he should act in uh, he should uh, act uh, in accordance with the aid and advice of the council of ministers right not independently that is the idea uh, but we see that the governor office of governor especially in the non bjp ruled states uh, the, uh, please this is not to be used in answer maybe some other expression may be used so that that is taking place so the issue of role of governor and discretionary power of powers of the governors come to light. Okay, so some of the issues that I have summed up over here. So one is the use of veto powers with the holding uh, asset uh, assent to the bill. So that is there. Then with Punjab, we saw the Punjab governor not summoning or proroguing the sessions of the house. So that was there. Then seeking inf the governor has the discretionary power of seeking information. So th that issue took place in Punjab. Okay. Then governor directing executives by and bypassing the L ministers. So that is again a violation of the gov by from the governor's side. Then 
governors making political and politically sensitive remarks so and those things are also there so discretionary powers so this theme may be important for this should be important for gs2 but haven't seen questions asked on this except for the case of uh, uh, national capital territory of delhi okay international news uh yeah so eight supplies to gaza halted again and there was this more, uh, brief pause un says that starvation in gaza is imminent in the absence of supplies of food etc okay german sweden there is this new chancellor that is coming up known as scholz so he has invited uh, erdogan turkish president to germany now both have differences on the issue of nato plus uh, the issue of the israel hamas conflict next uh, we have uh, pro china muizu so mohammed muizu has been sworn in as maldives president right so he this person is seen as pro china that means anti india and uh, one of the promises that he made was that if he selected to power he will expel the influence of india plus influ uh, the presence of foreign troops which is indian foreign troops from the maldivian soil so that they had said okay so we have to see what all happens eventually but he says this is his first and foremost priority now briefly about the politics of maldives so there are these two main political parties so one is progressive party of maldives which we see as pro china and that which means anti india and the previous government was seen as pro india that is maldives democratic party so now we have the ppm progressive party of maldives in power now how do they affect us so india south of 8 degree channel is a series of islands linearly north south direction which is maldives right so maldives is located very strategically close to india plus it passes you know the important sea lanes of communication passes through close vicinity of maldives so it's a very important area for india uh, important from point uh, india over here plus the region of 200 kilometers from here and there will also comprise of the exclusive economic zone and again india would have interest in this region in that sense also okay same way china also is concerned about the indian ocean region it wants to have greater footprint especially around india so yeah so uh, china wants to have more presence and uh, reduce the influence of india in the indian ocean region in fact they also say that naming uh, this ocean as indian ocean is also unfair they want renaming of indian ocean chinese refu rohingya refugee issue is again there in the news okay so india again um, i i think i have the map of northeast over here okay i don't have today okay so you know myanmar the, the border of myanmar uh, next to the indian ocean region there is this state known as ranki rankine state where there is rohingya population rohingya is believed to be Uh, originally from bangladesh who have migrated to rohingya the province of rohingya so the buddhist over here and the military the government all uh, majority buddhist they have been expelling the rohingyas right they have gotten into violence and because of which the rohingyas are moving out from here and there so many of them have gone to india settled in india the ruling party at the moment has a problem with this it should have also then there there is this prevalence in indonesia in the asian region so that is there okay so that is the basic rohingya issue now again when we talk about the rohingya issue so anything to do with rohingya affects our relations with bangladesh because uh, we say that the rohingya is a bangla and they should be expelled to bangladesh while well, bangladesh is not very willing to take them back next economy in next section you can see the oil prices have gone down it was 83 82 dollars per barrel it is right now almost 81 dollars per barrel so small uh, reduction is seen over here next news yesterday we heard about rbi raising concerns over the rise of 
unsecured loans that is loans money that is lent by the banks without taking any collateral so that that was there in the news so today we hear that rbi has taken measures to reduce this tightening of unsecured loans so they have said that if you want to banks want to lend more then in that case they need to have higher capital requirements because it is risky so you have to have more capital so if they do this the banks you know their ability to lend will come down they will also have to charge higher rate of interest so that has been done increase the risk risk way on the exposure of banks to consumer credit so this has been done which basically means this okay so this will lead to moderation in the aggregate growth of the unsecured loans it will increase in it will lead to increase in rates as i've already told you plus if the banks are not lending or discouraged from lending then it would the non banking financial corporation will go into it nbfcs will move towards lending this unsecured unsecured lending okay this aviation company p and w pratt and whitney so they are looking at having a maintenance repair overhaul facility mro in india right now let me tell you india wants to be an hub for aviation not just in you know transport and all but also in aviation manufacturing uh, it also wants that it says that we have this cheap labor so we should have this maintains repair overall facilities also so that's one of the stated goals of the government so that is there okay next capex capital expenditure for railways and nhai may be funded solely by the budget no i'm not don't know so much about nhai but i do know that railways previously used to have the rail budget so there was this normal budget and then the rail budget so the bbek deproy committee actually recommended that the rail budget should be integrated with the normal budget there is no need for a separate budget so same thing is being done now right so this this is made part of the over, overall budget so it will, and this will they say that it will provide greater transparency uh, in the expenses uh, expenses that are being made now i don't understand because rail budget also was actually was a more elaborate version of the rail spending than the overall budget to me this will lead to lesser transparency as as well as at, at least when it comes to announcement so let's see okay indo pacific economic framework talks on clean economy concluded okay so what is this ipef first of all it's a us led initiative uh, it's an us led uh, initiative which aims at addressing four pillars in the indo pacific region that is these four pillars are important trade supply chains clean energy decarbonization and infrastructure so sorry decarbonization and infrastructure and tax and anti corruption so the four pillars are there again first of all trade supply chain clean energy third one is decarbonization and infrastructure fourth is tax and anti corruption the idea is to counter china and create this uh, infrastructure in a clean way because we say clean way because chinese investments when they go chinese so they lead to creation of more debt plus there is less emphasis on decarbonization so that is what ipe us led initiative is doing now as far as india is concerned india is signatory of three pillars so india is not a signatory of the pillar on trade but all other pillars india is a signatory so that much you must know okay now so they held a talks on clean economy so that, that is the agenda of this summit that took place okay so that's it now the theme of ipef the upcoming ipef uh, is inclusive and sustainable growth 2023 so that is the theme for 2023 year and again if you look at ipef if you just do a simple uh, google research ipef members sign supply chain agreement negotiation negotiations on clean and fair uh, infrastructures that that is one thing right so supply chain agreement they have done over here so 
that's it actually that's what i want to do show sure. okay moving on india invites countries to join biofuel alliance so this is happening at the voice of global south summit right so here india is pitching oil minister is saying global biofuel alliance now which all countries are part of the global biofuel alliance there are 19 countries which includes brazil us india they were the found starters this this was announced in the recent g20 summit which was hosted in india so biofuel sharing of technology plus supplies on biofuels that was the idea so the now the oil minister is saying or we like say india is suggesting that the global south which is a tropical country the ideal conditions for the growth of uh, biofuels so they should be becoming a part of this network so that suggestion is there okay so nine initiating members india us brazil argentina bangladesh italy so those these countries are there uh, next piyush goel is saying that we need supply chain talks so this he is saying that global supply uh, global south summit should focus on the supply chain talks better integration and reducing dependence on china yes ipef the supply chain so one of the uh, agreements was on uh, the supply chain pact which says re reducing dependence on china and that is basically semiconductors and rare earths okay last the explainer section to yeah we have to do this can't help it cop28 to be held in dubai from november 30th to december 12th you know earlier the exam cycle was same this one and typically question on climate change was always asked and in G, uh, gs2 paper not gs3 gs2 paper because gs3 is the environment we expect over here but it was in gs2 because it is also international relations okay so cop28 is taking place in dubai now what is the agenda so agenda is very simple uh, global stock taking right so global stock taking has to be done what all come promises were made in 2015 and other summits what is the outcome it is global stock taking so this was mandated by in the 2015 uh, paris summit and it's also known as cop21 okay so then that was done so this will be carried out this has been carried out in the last since the last year and it is to look in look into as to where are we standing on the flight towards a fight towards climate change what are countries doing in this regard so all that so global stock taking also means discussion on pending issues like climate finance um, there is a the green climate fund uh, which said by 2020 uh, the rich nations will contribute 100 dollar 100 billion dollars per year so that promise was made which was not happened then there is another thing that is developed economies have technology we want to move towards renewable energy so rich countries giving this this technology to use renewable energies right harness renewable energy in a sustainable way so that is the short in cop 28 now where are we you know the summit is taking place where are we on this climate change fight you must have already seen reports that uh, we are having hearing about the hottest year yesterday's news said that brazil is bracing for a very warm you know summer has not started but again very hot weather is there so a report substantiating the same there is a un specialized agency known as world meteorological organization which says that this is the one of the next four years perhaps this year itself we will breach the 1.5 degree celsius threshold we will exceed this level 1.5 degree celsius threshold what was this so this it was believed by the environmentalist and environmental scientist that the global temperature global warming temperature should be limited to 1.5 degree celsius of pre industrial level 1890s if it goes beyond this we will have catastrophic uh, impact on the environment 
so it says that we are going to breach this level this year and the coming years most likely this year itself we will do it 2016 was already the warmest year to 2023 is expected to break that record okay now if we want to address this issue we have to reduce emissions so this emissions have to reduce have to be reduced by 43 percent right 43 percent reduction is required uh, from 2019 levels so we are in 2030 so it's 43 percent by 2030 of to 2019 levels but till now we have only managed two percent reduction which is not sufficient of course it is not sufficient so that is there and to do this we need financial support financial resources which is a perennial problem for this we need the green climate fund 100 billion dollars that is not happening by the way the green climate fund prelims thing it came into a, uh, action because of the copenhagen accord copenhagen is in denmark okay so that is it now one of the strategies of addressing you know meeting this uh, uh, reduction in emissions is tripling of renewable energy so this is being talked about that we need to triple renewable renewable energy capacity so at present at the global level it is 28 percent so tripling would amount to somewhere around 70 percent of renewable energy by 2030 and this action alone can help reduce emissions by 7 billion ton 7 billion ton of carbon equivalent carbon dioxide equivalent emissions so this was brief on briefly on the cop 28 now coming to the new flare up in myanmar a uh, very briefly we will discuss this okay so in myanmar's chin state over here there is a there is violence going on between the government or we can say the janta government military dictatorship and the brotherhood the three brotherhood alliance let me just write three brotherhood alliance which is comprising of which is the front of the three ethnic armed organization eaos right so that is there so eaos and uh, the national uh, yeah so that's that's going on now that this, this alliance has taken over uh, this region from the government so the region has gone out of the hand of the government and because of the scale of violence, we are seeing people ref coming into the state of Mizoram, especially this area, Zwakhtar, Zwakhtar region. Right, so migration of taking place, refugees are coming over here. So this is of concern to India. So that is issue number one. Then what are the other issues? So one is the influx of Myanmar's national, so that is there. The other reach is that because of this instability, India's projects like trilateral national highway and all those things may also get compromised because of this. So India is concerned. We also have this Kaladan project, which again passes through the same something like this, Sitwe Port project, Kaladan project, something like this. Right. So that is not a good thing. And this may push India to negotiate with the Janta government, which India has been reluctant to do so. Next, proposed UK India FTA and why uh, the UK may benefit. So, first of all, India UK benefit. So, what happened? So, earlier we never used to talk about it. It used to be India EU free trade agreement. Free trade agreement means prefer preferential trade, um, reduction of tariff barriers. Tar tariff means duties that if something is export imported into your country, the country importing country puts additional taxes and non-tariff barriers for example when something goes from india to europe eu or this thing so they may say that see agriculture is there for example you are using pesticides so that it does not meet the quality requirement so that is an example of tariff barriers so free trade agreement means reduction of tariff and non-tariff barriers it means greater integration of economies now coming to this so earlier it used to be india eu but post the brexit EU India EU FTA is not much progress is there so we are saying okay fine at least go with one country so India UK FTA FTA plus UK is also now very keen on having an FTA because it is not part of EU 
so it wants you know more economic partners so that is one of the things okay so india believes that by having fta it will be easier for indians to export to uk especially in labor intensive sectors like apparel gems jewelry etc it will make india competitive as compared to bangladesh for instance india has been losing market share to bangladesh so with the fta there will be some respite okay now british parliament has this warned the hips uh, showcase the report which says that such a measure would affect uh, britain's efforts in uh, providing uh, you know relief to the least developed countries it has some commitments for least developed countries like bangladesh so that may get compromised in fact we are openly saying it it will okay next uh yeah but at the same time the uk may also benefit in fact if we see historically whenever we have given fta it has it's not actually helped us increase our exports it has actually led to more imports coming into india facilitated right so that that is the case for example automobile sectors uh, whiskey scotch whiskey etc there is whiskey there is a higher tax 100% to 150% and, and we don't know to what scale it would come down but you can imagine the high import high value of uh, commodities so the balance of trade may be in favor of uk only further they are expected to talk negotiate on the issue of carbon tax as well uk has imposing a carbon tax including eu so the implications for india so that may also be discussed okay so that's it from today's news analysis uh, thank you for